So hi, hello and welcome. Today another beginner's question and a, quite a long uh, email that I received. So I'm uh, cutting it down a little bit. Uh, where I really need help is on uh, everything else. Um, simply put, uh, what do I need or what would you suggest for a complete novice to get started? For example, slides, uh, what kind, how many, tools, tweezers, scissors, eyedroppers, etc. Et what kind and where to buy, cleaning compounds, uh, sterilization for tools, slides, hands and equipment, what kind, mounting medium? Um, in other words, uh, everything I need so when I go to do a project, I have what I need to do it. Uh, please bear in mind that I'm such a complete novice that I'm not even sure I'm asking the right question correctly. To that end, uh, would you consider making a video on everything a complete novice needs to get started in microscopy minus the microscope? Thank you for the question. I think that's the video here today. And indeed, I have prepared um, a few things that I want to show you. Uh, but let me start a little bit uh, yeah, with a um, more direct uh, answer. The things that you need, of course, depend on the things that you actually want to do. Um, it's not a very useful answer, um, of course. But if you want to do, for example, a lot of, uh, um, I don't know, histology, where you're actually making thin sections of, of tissue, of animal tissues or so, well, then it's a, quite a complex thing and uh, you, you need a, a lot of laboratory equipment but if you actually want to keep it a little bit simple like many beginners uh, like to do well then of course uh, you don't need so much and I think I'm gonna center my video on that um, but today I, I want to surprise you first uh, with uh, one thing that you I think everybody should have uh, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or not it's gonna be a surprise now it's a notebook Okay, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I think uh, it's a good uh, thing um, if you actually have some kind of a, like a lab notebook where you actually um, take notes and keep a record of all of the things that you observe. Um, and uh, let me explain. Um, it's like this that uh, microscopy, unless you're preparing slides and collecting slides and so on, um, unless you're doing that, um, microscopy being most an observation hobby um, is in that sense rather, um, how shall I say, non-productive. And when I say non-productive, I mean is you're not producing anything, right? You're just uh, looking at some things and you're enjoying the things that you see but at the end of your microscopy session after half an hour or an hour or however long uh, you spend behind the microscope essentially you don't have anything right um, yeah you gained more knowledge of course uh, you enjoyed the things that you were doing but unless you were taking pictures uh, that would be one way of actually uh, gaining or collecting something. You really don't uh, have anything. Um, and uh, in order to, uh, to kind of uh, have a personal um, yeah, record of actually what you have done, I would highly recommend that you uh, keep a diary of your microscopic activities. I mean, that is, uh, you put down a date and then you basically write down what you saw or what you didn't see. It doesn't even have to look nice, really. Um, um, it's basically uh, yeah, a lab notebook uh, that uh, lies next to your microscope and you keep on yeah, writing notes into it. Yeah? Took a water sample, found nothing interesting, for example, with a date. Yeah? Um, what I have done many years ago, over 20 years ago, I've actually started a book like this. Um, I didn't complete it. Uh, it's not a, a classical uh, lab book, but actually I made drawings. Okay. Um, yeah, um, of the things that, I don't know, maybe you can see this, of the things that I found, yeah, and uh, that is, was basically my way of, of kind of, uh, yeah, uh, keeping, uh, keeping track of my observations, a whole bunch of diatoms, um, and I enjoyed doing that, yeah, wing of an insect, um, something unknown, yeah, so that is uh, basically the way that I kind of interpreted the hobby and, and keeping uh, um, notes or making drawings, well, they're getting worse the longer I, <laughs> yeah, uh, in keeping notes and, and, and doing things like this, actually um, make sure make sure that you kind of uh, do the hobby with a certain degree of deliberation, okay, and this kind of also should prevent boredom of actually setting in, and then at the end of the day you have something in your hand and you can say, well, that's basically what I've uh, collected, yeah. So, um, however, yeah, there, I know that uh, essentially you want to uh, know about uh, other um, hardware and accessories, but I'll do a couple of books first. Um, there is a book that I can recommend, and believe it or not, it is even translated into English. The German one is called, uh, yeah, it lo looks like this, uh, but there is a link actually, um, and this has been translated um, into English and can be bought over Amazon, and I highly, highly recommend this book. Basically a book uh, which uh, is an identification book, uh, uh, for uh, water um, organisms um, and there are, I don't know, hundreds if not thousands of drawings in there um, and pretty good drawings uh, for which kind of help you identify the water organisms. And this one here is an amateur microscopy book uh, 
talks about uh, different types of microscopes, buying a microscope, sample preparation, also a little bit of biology. So basically across the board, right? Um, yeah, some some uh, guidelines on how to prepare specimens. So that is a really a a, um, a pretty pretty good book, I have to admit. Okay, um, you can buy the translated version as well. So that is basically the paperwork. Okay, now let's get a little bit more um, yeah concrete uh, with the things that I actually have. Um, I don't know. I've got a whole bunch of a whole bunch of things here. I'm going to just get started. What you might need is uh, some kind of glass jars, okay, for collecting water samples. Here, that's one contains pond water, okay. Um, why glass jar uh, allows light to go in photosynthesis is possible if you collect algae, okay. So number one, for other smaller uh, dry specimens, um, I have these plastic containers here. And what I do is when I find an insect or anything else that I'm interested in, I simply put it in here and take it along home and I can keep it in there for however long I want to keep it in there. Um, they, I bought these uh, from a drug uh, store um, and what they do is, is they made hand creams and they put them into here, right? The different sizes, of course. Um, and if you don't have that, maybe some of you still know what this is. This is a film a canister. They used to have uh, yeah, analog film in those uh, also can also still be bought over eBay. Okay, um, it's watertight and also very useful. Okay, so concerning the containers, uh, what, it, what else? Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna go through the whole thing. Of course, you need a, a microscope slides. Okay, um, that's kind of clear. The ones that I have here, they have a frosted edge, so I can label it with a, a pencil. And the corners here, if you can see, there are actually also diagonal, so that they do not chip off. So these are pretty decent slides and also here the edges here are also polished so that you don't hurt yourself and it also kind of prevents chipping, okay? So these are the, the slides over here. Where is it? I don't know where I put it. I lost it. No, here it is. That is the other thing that I wanted to show you. This is a plastic container where I keep my used slides and then when it's full I kind of clean them, I sort them out, um, I wash them and recycle them, okay? So that is for used slides. Of course, it uh, goes without saying, cover glasses, I use uh, the square ones, yeah? Here is, and that's pretty much it. Um, for um, making uh, temporary mounts, uh, you might want to have a dish like this, uh, to uh, which kind of uh, contains water so that you can al always add a little bit more water to the slide. Um, those dishes are useful because they don't decant uh, tip over. If you don't have that, because they're not so easy to get really, um, um, you can also use some kind of a plastic cap. This one is from a, a, a camera objective lens to cover. Yeah, it's also possible. Um, yeah, this one over here is a brush uh, to kind of clean the optics. Another thing that I have in here, no, I cannot find it again. Oh, I'm well prepared. <laughs> this one here is, uh, of course, also, I don't know how, how you call this, yeah, for removing dust. But um, the, the intensity is not very, yeah, the airflow is not very strong, so I, sometimes the brush is actually easier. Also recommended. Yeah, I think I already showed you this here. That is a, uh, yeah, my field box, which I also use for simply storing all of the equipment. Um, anything else that I need? Yeah, now the tools, the tools. Um, there are essentially two tools that I highly recommend, um, which I use, I would say 95% uh, of the time. These tweezers here, the pointed tweezers are very useful because they are, can also be used to transfer water. So water drop can be actually uh, placed here and then you can transfer some water as well when you make slides. And uh, these scissors here, okay, they are uh, pointed and small enough so that I can actually also cut apart small samples. And I of course also have other stuff here. This was all part of a dissecting kit. I mean, yeah, so that's basically also something. I don't use them very often. By the way, if you wanna buy stuff like this, um, there is a, a, a microscopy shop that I have now, um, which is uh, basically a collection of affiliate links. Um, so I'm not selling the stuff, but it, these are just Amazon links. And if you vis visit that shop, then you can find a lot of uh, microscopy related uh, accessories. Uh, there is um, a link, of course, below. Um, yeah, um, of course, some um, pipette yeah, and a rubber bulb. Um, I would say uh, it's probably more useful without the bulb. What, what I do is, is I place my finger on top here, I put it into the water sample, I let go, water rushes in, I close it again, and then I, this way I can uh, collect water organisms. Okay, okay now what about uh, permanent uh, slides? And I think uh, that every amateur microscopist, even if he or she um, prepares his or her own slides, I highly recommend that you also get yourself a general 
um, slide set with ready-made slides. Um, the reason is, is uh, that uh, sometimes you don't want to prepare anything or you don't have anything specific to look at. Um, so you simply can take out one of these slides here and then put them under the microscope and uh, look at the things. Uh, in that sense, uh, that's the easiest uh, way um, to actually do microscopy and the fastest way and where you do not need any extra equipment. Uh, uh, but it's also like this that sometimes uh, many microscopes uh, that you buy, um, sometimes they already come along with a, a small slide set. If not, then I recommend that you, you buy yourself one. Um, I'm, for example, here there is a whole box here that contains 50. Um, these are from an educational series, um, so they contain um, all different uh, range of different specimens from plant uh, plants to animals to whole mounts from, of insects, everything, okay? Um, and uh, what I would simply suggest is if you buy this, uh, then do not buy specific ones which are only put together for, let's say, for medical students, okay? Because then they will be uh, containing many specialized specimens. Um, and uh, what I would therefore recommend, get a general one where is there's a mix of different uh, um, different assortment, especially plant. Uh, plants look very nice, okay? So if you um, have a, a little choice, uh, then also get some cross-section of some plant stems and roots and so on. They look uh, kind of nice because the patterns look very nice. And uh, yeah, um, what else do I have? Last but not least, uh, maybe uh, this I should make a separate video of, uh, of this. If you want to make permanently mounted slides, there is a mounting medium that I recommend, or at least it's the one I use most often. It's called Uperol. Um, has several advantages for amateurs. Uh, first of all, you do not need any toxic solvents. Um, you can dilute it with uh, with alcohol. Okay, so that's a good thing. Um, so you do not uh, need to mess around with xaline and, and other um, more dangerous uh, solvents. Um, and this is really a good mounting medium if uh, the specimen that you have is is completely dry. Um, so if you have a dry insect or dry insect wings, they can be directly mounted in here. Um, and if they're not completely dry, like for example, you place them first into some alcohol, um, then it's also compatible. Okay, uh, many other uh, mounting media it doesn't work like this. You cannot uh, use them from transferring them from alcohol into the mounting medium because uh, that's not going to work. Uh, it's not compatible. But this one actually is, is, is quite good in that sense. Disadvantage takes around six weeks to dry. Okay, so you've got to keep the slide horizontal for six weeks to completely dry out. But otherwise, I think uh, it's a very good general purpose mounting medium, especially uh, for, um, I read, um, entomologists. So these are the insect pe uh, for people, okay? The, the people who collect insects, they, they actually uh, use this. And that, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll, I'm, I'm very honest with you, that's uh, pretty much it um, that I, what I have. Um, otherwise, yeah. Um, if you have some of this stuff here, then you're already going to be quite uh, uh, quite busy <laughs> um, and it's going to give you a good start. Uh, yeah, um, I wish you a nice day. Leave comments below. Um, wish you a nice day. Happy microbe hunting as always. Bye-bye. Uh, and thank you again for the question. Uh, keep posting questions uh, so that I have, uh, I'll try to answer them. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>